Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is John Denny, whose record is 3-5 with a 3.48 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Brian Kelly, whose record is 1-0 with a 3 ERA. And if you're wondering, where was the game yesterday? I post a game nearly every day, and I tried. I played five innings of a ball game yesterday, and the uh, editing software uh, that was recording the video completely died on me. And I thought, maybe there's a chance I could somehow save it, but it shut everything down. And then on top of that, I had a system update that was waiting. So it all just got messed up. I'd like to tell you what the score was, but I, I think I'll save that for after the game. Uh, so that way you know that none of this is predetermined and that I didn't just shut it down uh, because I was pissed off. I was actually really pissed off that the game didn't work. Um, but nonetheless, I, uh, I, I just decided to let it pass for a day. We'll come back today and give it a shot. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. The lineups are exactly the same as yesterday. Uh, I was just as surprised today to find out yesterday that we have three guys that are not available today. And with a um, pitcher making his first start of the season, um, at the time I was like, I don't know how he's going to do but we really need him to go six in order to make up for the three relievers who are not available today. Here's the lineup. It's uh, our lineup versus righties. We are gonna give three of our regulars a day off. So Trammell, uh, Ricky Henderson, and Andre Dawson are all gonna sit out today's game. And let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Cleveland Indians. Batting leadoff, playing third base, is Kevin Romberg. Batting second in center field is Vaughn Hayes. Batting third at first base is Carl Pagel. Batting cleanup in right field is Dan Pasqua. Batting fifth and DHing today is Tim Norid. Batting sixth and catching is Chris Bando. Batting seventh in left field is Jerry Turner. Batting eighth, playing second base is Juan Bonilla. And batting ninth, playing shortstop is Jerry Dibzinski. Here's Brian Kelly. As I mentioned, he is making his first start of the season. He's taking over for Tom Filer in the number five spot in the rotation. Filer uh, struggled last couple of starts. So with Brian Kelly, who has, as you can see here, Performed well all throughout the minor leagues and had a good uh, first go around in the bigs with um, 24 relief appearances. I'm sorry, 24 total appearances and two relief appearances. Two starts, you know what I mean. He was 3 and 1 last year, and uh, you can see here he's pitched nine innings so far this year with uh, six Ks and opponents are batting 182 against him. So. We need him to have a decent outing today with the bullpen, uh, needing a, a lot of rest. Here is the Tigers' defensive alignment for today's game. We got Gold Glovers at first and second today. And Kevin Romberg leading off against Brian Kelly. Play ball! One two count to Romberg and Kelly. I can already tell you right now, he's off to a better start than he was in the uh, game that was rained out yesterday. One down. Here is Von Hayes. Hayes hits a slow roller to Solars. And Solars tosses him out. Two quick outs for Kelly. And then he gets Carl Pagel on a 80 mile an hour changeup. And that'll do it for the top of the first. Let's go ahead and do the Tigers lineup rundown for today's ball game. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second and DHing today is Greg Brock. Batting third in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup, playing third base, is Mickey Hatcher. 
Batting fifth, playing first base is Eddie Murray. And batting sixth in center field is Chet Lemon. Batting seventh in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting eighth and catching today is Lance Parrish. And batting ninth, playing shortstop is Guy Solars. Let's take a look at John Denny. We've already seen him once this season. Uh, he's making his 10th start. He's 3-5 with a 3.48 ERA. 37 Ks in 64.2 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 273 against him. Uh, in real life in 1983, I think I mentioned before, he uh, was the National League Cy Young Award winner uh, for the Phillies. And if we take a look at his log, you'll see in his previous start against Detroit, he took the loss. He went seven and a third innings, giving up six runs with 10 hits and three walks and three Ks. So not a good outing for Denny versus Detroit. And hopefully we can take it to him again today. Here is the defensive alignment for the Indians with uh, Chris Bando, the only gold glover, he's behind the plate. And Sweet Lou leading off against John Denny. Three for 21 in his career. And Lou goes up Otako for a home run. Lou did have a home run in the rain out yesterday. So I feel good about that. Um, I guess I can say now that the Tigers had three home runs through the first five innings. And we were losing that ball game yesterday. But Lou had one of them. It's 1-0 Detroit. Greg Brock hits a comebacker to John Denny, who tosses him out at first. There's one out. Next up, Kirk Gibson, a ground ball up the middle. Good range by Dibzinski, making the play easily. Two down. And here's Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher betting 326 with three home runs. Flips it to right. There's hit number two for the Tigers. Do we want to go for a double? We do not. So we'll be satisfied with Hatcher's base hit. And that's going to bring up Eddie Murray. Two down. Runner on first. He's got a home run in his career versus Denny. And Denny strikes him out. So the Tigers get on the board with the leadoff home run by Whitaker. That was his sixth on the season. We go to the top of the second inning. Here is Dan Pasqua leading off. It's Pasqua, Norted, and Bando. And Kelly walks Pasqua. That is the first walk for Kelly today. He had five walks in four innings yesterday when we finally yanked him from the ball game. Norred up next with a ground ball to Whitaker. Pasqua must have been running on a hit and run because the only play was to first. Runner in scoring position now for Chris Bando. He's batting 264 with four home runs. It's a line drive to center field. And Lemon makes the catch. Pasqua does not tag. So two down, here's Jerry Turner. Turner has absolutely destroyed us this series. He's batting 352 versus righties. And uh, absolutely crushing it. And here he's going to drop it into right center field for a hit. And that'll get the game tied up. Turner, unbelievable. Now, now batting 304. Runner on first. That's going to bring up Juan Bonilla. And there's another walk. Oh, boy. Okay, so first and second, two down. Number nine hitter, Jerry Dibzinski up. We're going to pull the outfield in. If uh, the Dibber gets a base hit, maybe we can get Turner. A wild pitch, doesn't matter. Now a base hit scores two. Yeah, we got to pull the outfield in again, don't we? Try to prevent the second run from scoring. The third, technically. 1-1 one, one count for the Dibber. And he flips it into right center field. That should be catchable. It is. The damage is done, though, as the Indians tie up the ball game. It's all tied at one. Chet Lemon leading off this inning. He hits a high fly ball to the left. One out. Here's Glenn Wilson. Wilson 
kind of in there for defensive purposes today. He's batting 135 versus right-handers, so not so good. As he gets a base hit, there we go. Maybe he's going to get it rolling. Runner on first. And Lance Parrish up. Parrish, he did have one of the three home runs yesterday. Striking out looking here for the second K from Denny. And Guy Solars, who's just aching to get on base any way he can. He walks. There we go. First and second with two down and Sweet Lou at the plate. Light off the game with the home run. And Lou hits a grounder back up the middle that Dibzinski gets the glove on. We go to the top of the third. Romberg leading off. It's Romberg, Hayes, and Pagel. Romberg hits a grounder to Whitaker. One down here in the top of the third. Next up is Von Hayes. I mean, Hayes is probably the what I would consider to be the best hitter on the team. And uh, he's, his average is at 205, so he's having a Lance Parrish type year. Flies out to right, and then Kelly walks Pagel. Third walk in the ballgame. Kelly at 48 pitches. Here's Danny Pasqua. Pasqua lifts it to left field. Caught just shy of the warning track for the third out. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Greg Brock leading off. Brock over three in his career versus John Denny. And Brock flips it to right. There's one out. Next up is Gibby. And Gibby pops it up on the infield. Two down. It's going to leave it up to Sticky Mickey to get something going. And he lines it right at the third baseman. Romberg, and that'll do it. We're going to the top of the fourth inning. All tied at one. Now, if you are wondering where is Tommy Brookins, he's still on the team. You may remember that I um, put all of the players that, you know, in the right primary defensive position. So Romberg was a second baseman last year, but his, he never played second base uh, in the majors. So we, I moved him to third, and that meant that Brookins was the odd man out. Uh, so he only gets, um, unfortunately, a limited playing time now. Norid hits a ground ball to first. Murray steps on the bag. There's one down here in the fourth. Chris Bando up next. Bando hits a comebacker right at Kelly, who boots it. This was uh this is where Kelly fell apart in yesterday's ball game. Kind of the second time through the lineup. Error with the runner on first. And Turner gets another hit. Unbelievable. We're gonna guard the lines. Uh Benia walked his first time up. We need a double play here. Kelly jams him inside. That's a pop-up to Hatcher. Two down for the Dibber, and yet we're pulling the outfield in once again. Catcher running on second. Ground ball to third, just step on the bag. There we go. Okay, so Kelly, this is, you know, what I feel bad about with the game uh, dying on us yesterday. I mean, Kelly was out of the ball game because he was so terrible. Uh, and now it's all tied at one, so it doesn't feel doesn't feel right, but I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. So Eddie Murray leading off the bottom of the fourth inning, pop up into foul ground on the first base side, and Pagel makes the catch. One out. Here's Chet Lemon. Lemon ground ball to second. Two down. Glenn Wilson up next with a grounder to short. And the Dibber tosses him out. We're going to the top of the fifth. Game is moving along. Uh, definitely at a 
faster clip than yesterday's score fest. Romberg hits it up the middle and Solars saunters over and makes the play. One down. Von Hayes sends a fly ball into left center field. And Gibby makes the catch. Oh, Gibby's uh, defensive rating has gone down. Uh, just one tick from 88 to 87. I didn't notice that yesterday. Two outs for Carl Pagel, and Pagel lines it right at Mickey Hatcher, and that'll do it. Okay, so five decent innings from Kelly. We head to the bottom of the fifth. We have Parrish, Solars, and Sweet Lou up. Parrish continues his cold streak. Average down to 195. Solars wishes he was 195. He is now 1 for 28 on the season. And yes, he did have a hit in yesterday's ballgame. And now he might actually get sent to the minors. There's Lou with a base hit. Fourth Tigers hit today. This would be a situation where I might try to steal. But I like Brock's power. We'll give him a shot here. And Brock flies out to right, and that'll do it. Okay, so we're going to the top of the sixth. Uh, we got basically all lefties coming up. So uh, we're going to take out Brian Kelly. Uh, feels weird to do that considering we're going to pitch George Capazello. He's the only lefty we have, uh, so he might have to go two innings here. But we're okay with that as uh, Dan Pasqua will lead off the top of the sixth. He clips it into left field. One down. Next up is Tim Norrid, 173 hitter versus lefties. Ground ball to first. There's two outs. Chris Bando, turn around. He'll bat right-handed against the lefty Capazello. And Cappy. Gets a 1-2-3 inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Score is tied at one. We have three, four, and five due, due up, starting with Gibson. He takes strike three looking. Three Ks for Denny today. Mickey Hatcher. That's some pretty good wood on it. Sends it to right center field. 310 feet as Pasqua makes the catch. It's going to leave it up to Eddie Murray. And Murray grounds out to second. We're going to the seventh. Now, I definitely want Cappy. I think Cappy can go one more. Turner, he's a lefty. Um, and he does not hit lefties well. And then we have a couple. Uh, we actually have three light-hitting righties. So, I think... Capazello should be able to get through the bottom of this lineup. But it's going to all start with Turner. If Turner gets on, we're going to go to a righty. Play the odds. Ground ball to second. Whitaker gets him out. Nicely done. Okay, so now Bonilla does hit lefties well, as you might expect. He's batting 420. We're going to pull the outfield in. And Capazello walks him. That was a close pitch. Not what you want. Now, will Bonilla be going here? Uh, will Dibzinski bunt? We're going to pull the corners in. The Dibber's got a 96 bunt rating. I could see him sacrificing him over. Yeah, there we go. Lays down a bunt to third, and Bonilla does get over. Um... We're going to intentionally walk Kevin Romberg to get to the lefties. And Von Hayes is batting 064 versus lefties. So I feel good about this. We're going to play straight away. Here we go. 0-1 count. 
A ground ball to second. Whitaker. Oh, he boots it. Come on, Lou. Oh, man, that is frustrating. All right, I need to take a drink of my coffee there. Sorry about that. Okay, well, that's going to bring up Carl Pagel. Now, Carl Pagel is a tough out. He walks a lot. We need Cap. He strikes out. I mean, he's a 3 true outcome guy. He strikes out, he walks, and he jacks it. So, um, let's see what the outcome is here. Bases loaded are playing straight away. 1-1 one, one count and a base hit. Two runs will score. And it's 3-1. to one. Uh, With the error by Whitaker, that was uh, like written in the stars. There was nothing we were going to be able to do about that. There's another walk. And there's strike three. Okay, well, so for transparency purposes, we were losing 5-4. to four. It, despite those three solo shots yesterday, uh, we were losing when the game uh, stopped working. So, uh, you know, this team certainly has the ability to come back. But if we lose, I probably will feel okay about it, to be honest. And that doesn't mean we're going to stop trying, though. So here's Chet Lemon. Lemon hits a rainbow to the left. One out. Blood Wilson up next. Wilson, slow roller to first. And an error on the first baseman, Pagel. Okay. One swing of the bat from Parrish could tie it up or hit and do a double play. Full count. Oh, that was his pitch. That was low in the zone. He couldn't get around on it, though. Flies out to right field. Here's Gieselars. He's walked today, at least. And he hits it 437 feet. Just shy of hitting it off the wall in dead center field. All right, well, um, those are both unearned runs. I guess we're going to let him pitch one more inning here. Cappy on the 3-0 count has Bando swinging. Ground ball to third. One down. Here's Jerry Turner. Gosh, I hate this guy. Striking him out. There we go. Now we're going to bring in a right-hander. And that is Gumpy Gumpert, who's just been terrible. He was terrible in yesterday's game. Um, we just need him to get these next couple of right-handed outs. Nope. Gosh, he's terrible. Why is this guy so bad? His ratings are look good. I mean, his control is great. His command is solid. Okay, so he doesn't throw all that hard, I guess. Although his fastball is a 92. Maybe that's the, the problem. He's got above average movement. And yet, he is just absolutely terrible. Two down, runner on first. There's a ground ball to Lou. That should do it. There we go. Okay, we are headed to the bottom of the eighth inning. John Denny had 110 pitches. Uh, if the Tigers play it right, he should be tired. There we go. And Whitaker walks. Um, shoot, I wish we had a, somebody that could hit and run. Uh, there's no point in stealing. We need two runs. So, with Denny tired, maybe Brock can go deep. Let's go, Brock Ness Monster. Line drive to the left. And it's just a loud out. One down. Here's Gibby. Gibby hits a grounder to short. Well, they get the lead runner. Gibby safe at first. And he's had 124 pitches. And Hatcher pops it up. That's out number three. We're going to the ninth inning. Three to one, Cleveland. 
Romberg leading off against Dave Gumpert. And an infield single. And now we've got the lefties. We have no more lefties. We could go to Weaver, who does get lefties out, but we're, we're losing already. So if, if it was a different... If the game was closer or a different scenario, I might bring in Weaver, but I guess we're just going to have to play it out. Ground ball to first. That's going to be a tough double play. Romberg advances as Murray can only step on first. One down. Carl Pagel hits a home run. Danny Pasqua strikes out. And Tim Norrid. Ground ball that gets past Murray. Wow. I can't believe. That's a double. Wow. Okay, so that is um, his eighth double on the season. I feel like I should have Chris Rocks drop in those situations. Like, wow, dude. Or whatever he said to Will Smith. And he pops it up. Who knows? Will this be an error? Will it be caught? No suspense. We are going to the bottom of the ninth inning. We're down by four. Uh, on the verge of losing, which will make it all right, I guess. But I, I just feel bad about this game altogether. John Denny's at 132 pitches. And he's up four runs. One down. Here's Chet Lemon. Lemon. Lining out the center. Glenn Wilson. We're going to bring in uh, Hojo to get a pinch hit an opportunity here. Switch hitter. So he'll turn around bat left-handed. And he crushed it. Hojo is the best pinch hitter on his team. That is not his first pinch hit home run this year. And now it is a save opportunity as they bring in their closer, Victor Cruz, who is just absolutely great in this ballgame. He's got a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. He's got eight saves, no blueies. His fastball is rated at 97. He's got a palm ball. Um, this is his 13th appearance, and he's been good. Uh, actually, you know, he's given up. Opponents are betting. Wow. He's got uh, 10 walks. Only 6K is at a post of 279. It's going to be a tough rally here as Parrish steps in and he strikes out. Okay. Tigers lose 5 to 2. Completely uh, bummer of an outcome, but I, I guess if we had to lose, it was worth it because of yesterday's uh, debacle. So. Um, let's take a look at the standings. Uh, Tigers lose their 11th game. We are four games up on New York, who uh, won today. Take a look there at the West, where Seattle, the only other team other than California, above 500. Let's take a look at the National League. Why not? Uh, New York, Mets looking pretty good. And the Giants are on a seven-game winning streak, digging themselves out of last place. Okay. Let's take a look at headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Marty Barrett bashes two dongs. It's a 13-7 win over the Twinkies. Barrett went five for five, a walk, a double, two home runs. Two runs scored and four ribbies. That's pretty impressive. Freddie Lynn went three for five with a homer as well. Next up, Carl Pagel gets four ribbies uh, in the 5-2 to two win. Yeah, he had the home run. He had the two RBI single. Uh, the, both of those runs were unearned, I believe, though, because of Whitaker's error. Juan Bonilla had a hit. Jerry Turner sucks. Okay, let's take a look at transactions. There is no trade. Uh, okay, there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, Steve Howe gets a contract extension for $145,000 a year 
and we know how he's going to spend that money. Uh, Steve Howe. University of Michigan. Okay, uh, Kim Allen, this is bad news for Cincinnati, who's had a ton of bad news this year. He had 30 stolen bases. He almost had 100 last year. He's going to miss a month of baseball. And um, I believe they have maybe like a half dozen injuries. We'll take a look here momentarily. Now, this is the kind of the interesting part of the season as we're getting close to the uh, June amateur draft. In order for all those new names to come in, uh, players start to retire and uh, you know to make space in the game is kind of how I envision it. And uh, so Luis Quintana, uh, Mr. No Face, who played in the 70s, uh, he is going to retire and probably should. And then Gary Lavelle, who was a free agent, uh, retires. And there's his 1983 card. So he was still pitching in 1983. He just couldn't find a job. And then Lance McCullers of the Mets, Lance McCullers Sr., is injured, just like his oft-injured son. He's going to be out for 35 days. Okay, oh, I'm out of curiosity, let's look at the, at the Reds. This is a tough team right now. Look at their lineup. So, okay, well, only Kim Allen. And then pitchers. Yeah, Mario Soto, Tom Browning, and Jeff Combe. Um... They do have Randy Johnson, the big unit, though, as a 19-year-old lefty. So, okay, let's go pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Today was a drag. I'm sorry. Uh, I have low energy because I'm still kind of miffed about yesterday's game. Player of the game. I mean, do we give it to Hojo for hitting the home run? Uh, Lou did hit a home run as well, right? Yeah. And he got two hits. So, you know what? We're going to give it to Sweet Lou. That he had his sixth home run. Oh, but he had the error. And the error led to uh, two unearned runs. Does that negate his home run? I think it does. We're going to give it to Hojo. We're going to go with our first choice. That's Hojo. Uh, George Capazillo takes the loss. He did his best. He went two and two third innings. Too many walks for Brian Kelly. That is the big problem with him. And Dave Gumpert uh, will probably go back down to the minors before too long. Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with Game 1 versus the Toronto Blue Jays at home. Until then, everyone, have a great night.